Hey, did I scare you? I, I'm definitely sure I scared you. you. You flinched a little bit. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to jump straight into the video because I'm not going to lie to you, my legal journey was wild. And hopefully there's some lessons that you can take away from this video as well. So I think it's best to start my legal journey back when I was a university student. So as you know, I studied law at the University of Bristol. And to summarise my university experience, I worked hard, yes, I got the grades I wanted, I met some amazing people. But there was one thing that was very, very lacking during my whole university experience that I didn't take seriously enough, and that was networking. I went to networking events mainly to eat the food, and I didn't really, you know, engage in meaningful conversations with people when I went. I didn't understand the importance of forming legal connections. For example, I got offered a place in my first year of university, I got offered an open day at Simmons & Simmons. But I didn't go to it. I remember emailing them some sorry excuse saying, you know, I just can't make it. And the reason why I did that at the time was essentially I didn't understand the importance of open days. I thought there would be like university open days where they just show you around the firm. I didn't understand that they would have things like workshops, interviewing insiders, tips, guidance, you'd meet solicitors, you can form your contacts from such an early stage. That would have been invaluable as a first year law student. The few networking events that I did attend, I didn't prepare for them well enough. I didn't research the firm, I didn't research who was attending. I didn't have a list of questions prepared. I just went into it thinking, oh, just engage in some conversation here and there. I the effect of that was, when I graduated, I wasn't even sure whether I wanted to be a solicitor. I just thought, yeah, okay, I'll apply, I'll apply for training contracts because everyone else is doing it. Secondly, I didn't form opinions on what firms were right for me. I didn't go to a networking event thinking there is something about this firm that I really like. The only thing I gauged from a networking event during university was whether their starters tasted good. So lesson number one, get involved in networking, put yourself out there, get involved with your law societies, stay on top of what events that they're hosting because genuinely the events that they host sometimes are super super useful. Even if you're a non-law student and you're not sure how to tap into the legal world, approach someone in your law society, tell them that you're interested in, interested in a legal career. When you're networking, have a list of questions prepared. What do you like about the firm? What, where do you see yourself in five years? What do you hate about the firm? Why did you decide to train at this firm? Why did you pick this firm over others? This can really help you to build a picture over what firm is right for you and therefore network effectively, don't just go for the food. So moving on to my next stage of my legal journey, one thing I did do right at university though was undertake the most important non-legal work experience ever. I undertook a tax internship at EY. Having a big four firm on my CV was not only a great booster in terms of reputation, but it was because that I'd learned so many skills and I'd had a real insight into the corporate world. It was something that I realised I want more of. Really, there is no harm in putting yourself out there and exploring other fields. At the end of this internship, I was offered a permanent grad job. And this was a big relief because at least I knew I was graduating and not going straight into unemployment, which is a big fear that graduates have uh, generally. The lesson two that I'd learnt from this part of my legal journey was get involved in non-legal work experience. You don't need to amass a big form of legal work experience only. Of course, legal experience is important, but it's more so the skills that you've learned. That's what, that's what law firms are really looking for. In my interviews, I've been asked more about my non-legal experiences than my legal. Interviewers are looking for how you've come to where you are now, through the skills that you've learnt, the people that you've met and the experiences that you've had. Even if you're in a retail job, you still learn skills like teamwork, leadership, client communication. Those are all relevant skills for a trainee. So moving on to the next stage of my legal journey. Do you remember how I said that EY was one of the biggest opportunities in boosting my CV? Well, honestly, I think that experience at EY was one of the reasons why I secured my VAC scheme with PwC Legal. This was also a big four accounting firm which has a legal branch within it. So I secured this VAC scheme, I was absolutely buzzing, like yes, I've got this now, I, once I've got this I'll get my TC. I, I was very, very complacent looking back at it because I thought that if I had my grad job with EY, I, I can definitely secure it after this VAC scheme. Boy, was I wrong! Lo and behold, after three weeks of the VAC scheme, I was rejected and I was so, so upset at the time, like actually heartbroken. Now when I look back at it, I'm so happy I was rejected. Not because I missed an opportunity with PwC Legal, because that's a wonderful firm and I really enjoyed my time there. 
but more so the year that followed afterwards I grew so much as a person and honestly at that point in time I wasn't ready for a training contract and I didn't possess the qualities that a trainee had. So lesson three that I'd learnt from getting rejected from a VAC scheme Take your back scheme seriously. You might be sat there thinking, of course I'm going to take my back scheme seriously, like duh. It's very, very easy to get complacent while you're there. You'll make friends with people in your cohort. You will get tired. You will get so, so drained and to the point where you're just like, I can't be arsed anymore. You can't let that affect you. You have to keep your performance up from day one, from the moment you walk into those doors. Actually, no, not from the moment you walk into the doors. The tube journey, if you're in London, the tube journey onto your VAT scheme, that's when you start. A little side note, I'll be doing a video on VAT scheme do's or don'ts, so please stay tuned for that. So if your memory is sharp, you'll remember that I was offered a grad job role with EY. I decided to take that on. I was newly graduated, freshly rejected from my VAT scheme. I didn't have any other choice. So I thought, why not try tax? Why not try accounting? Maybe the tables would turn and I would love accounting. Long story short, I didn't enjoy accounting at all. Don't get me wrong, EY was an amazing firm. The culture was great. There are people there that I still talk to now, even though I was there for such a short period of time. But honestly, accounting was just not for me. That first day of college, I was sat there like, why am I here? Oh my God, this is not for me. I don't like this. And the moment when it really, really set in with me that I don't like this career and that a legal career is more suited to what I like is when we were in college and the teacher was explaining the case law regarding what counts as plants and machinery for HMRC. That was the only point during college where my ears perked up and I was actually just fully, fully engaged with the conversation. Other than that, no, accounting just not. I, I have massive, massive respect to you accountants, but no, not for me. Thanks. So what did I do? Around about the same time, I started looking for paralegal jobs. I didn't want to settle for a career that wasn't really engaging me. It was actually affecting me quite badly. I was very lucky in applying and securing a job as a legal assistant with a regional firm called Freeths. So that leads on to my next lesson, lesson number four. Pursue a career that you are interested in. If you find yourself applying to training contracts just because every other law student and their dog is applying for training contracts, then you need to explore other options. You need to have a genuine interest and passion for the career that you're in. And the thing is, after university, everyone is so scared of becoming unemployed. It's not scary at all. We are young. We have that choice to explore our options. It's a privilege to be able to explore our options and find the career that's right for us. For some of us, being a solicitor is exactly what we want to be and that's great. Let's pursue that. But for some people, if you find a career that's not right for you, you need to explore other options. So where are we at? I've now left my firm at EY and I'm starting my legal assistant job in Freeths. But there's a catch. This job isn't in London. This job was in Birmingham. I relocated to a new location, an unfamiliar location where I barely had any friends or any family. And I look back and there was so much risk involved. What if I didn't like paralegaling? What if I didn't like Birmingham? Who would I go to in case of an emergency? Google Maps has failed me so many times. What if I get lost? The biggest risk of all though, what if I catch that dreaded broomy accent? Do you see me try that accent there? It's quite good, wasn't it? Broomy. But I'm very, very happy to say that the risk paid off. So why did the risk pay off? I was an insolvency paralegal for this firm and the tasks that I was involved in gave me significant exposure. I was drafting witness statements. I was drafting letters to clients. I was on the phone to clients, to courts, to third parties. The experience really, really helped solidify that I wanted to be a trainee solicitor and it really helped solidify what kind of firm I wanted to go for. I wanted to work for a firm where I was in small teams and I had that exposure. So lesson number five, take risks to fulfill what you desire the most. Go out of your comfort zones. You may be surprised by how much you learn or how much you're exposed to. So whilst I was working as a paralegal, I was undertaking back scheme applications and training contract applications. In the stage of 2018 to 2019, I'm pretty sure I applied to around 45 firms. Um, out of those, I had four assessment centres, two VAC schemes and 
four final interviews for training contracts, out of which I received three training contract offers altogether. Out of those three training contracts, two of them were from Vax. I hope I'm not showing up the middle finger. Okay, I'm not. Two of them. Two of them are from VAC schemes and one of them was from a direct training contract application. So what lesson I'd learnt from constant applications? You have to keep trying. This training contract process is difficult but it's not impossible. There is an art to writing applications, to excelling in online tests, to undertaking interviews correctly, to knowing about the different tasks involved in an assessment centre and that all takes practice every single step. I believe a training contract is difficult to get, yes, it's difficult to obtain, but it's not impossible. If I had received a training contract from PwC Legal, I wouldn't be sat here making YouTube videos right now. I wouldn't be mentoring. Rejections really are redirections. Oh my god, I think I smudged my mascara right now. So there is a summary of my journey to three training contracts. I hope the lessons that I've learned are something that you can take away too for your own experiences. Stay tuned for my next video on giving you my top tips for- why am I doing gum fingers? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Stay tuned for my next video on my top tips for writing applications for VAC schemes or training contracts.